Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something new to show you and also a new knot video on this series of tying knots for your boat. But first, we have a new film shoot location. Our friends at East Bay Flats have this beautiful dock here that's just been built and it's sitting here empty and we thought, man, what a great place to film. We asked their permission, they said yes. If you wanna check out possible dock slip uh, boat slip rental for your boat. Check them out. East Bay Flats are on Facebook. The docks, uh, the slips are just been built. They're not 100% ready, but at, you know, as of this filming, if you call them up, check them out, they'll be able to set you up with a rental. All right, so for this video, we want to show you what we're planning on doing here. We're going to show you how to tie the cleat hitch and how to tie it right. There's actually several ways to tie this wrong. You want to get this right, especially if you have inclement weather coming. Uh, you want to really learn how to tie this right. So we're going to show you the basic steps how to do that. Also, if you'll notice how we have our boat tied in this slip today, we're going to go over a couple of basics real quick here of why we've done it this way. If your boat is in a tidal zone and the tide's going up and down, you want your boat to stay in the center of the slip, but you want to allow for the fall or allow for the rise. So see how we've got our back lines crisscrossed there? We also have a spring line, and the spring line is there to pull the boat back away from the dock so it doesn't end up with a swim platform on the top of the dock. In the front of the boat, we don't have uh, lines today because this is temporary, so I did not tie off the front, but I wanted to kind of show you that. If you're in a tidal zone, crisscross your sterns and crisscross your bow lines, that'll allow for the fall. Add a spring line, that's gonna prevent you from traveling rearward towards danger here. So, a little pro tip for you there. All right, well, let's talk about the cleat hitch. We have the cleat hitch actually tied in a couple places here, but we're going to talk about this one over here because we've got a whole lot less going on. What we're going to do is we're going to take our line as it's coming in from that cleat. See the direction we're coming from? And we're going to, let me untie it here. We're going to approach this cleat from the opposite side of the intro of that direction. So see how we're coming from there? We're going to approach on this top side. We don't want to approach from the bottom. We want to approach from the top. If we approach from the bottom and we wrap around this full turn, this line will get kinked right here. So we approach from the top, come around the full turn, and we're not going to run that risk because we're coming over the top. Okay. So approaching from the opposite, we're coming from there, we're coming to the top here. We're going to make a full turn around this bottom section of the cleat here. We're gonna come up and over the top here, and then we're gonna take our line and we're gonna fold it over like this. Now, whatever is nearest to you, this piece that is nearest to you, we're gonna flip it away from the line coming in. So it's gonna get flipped away. And when you're done, to tell if you've done it right, you're gonna have two lines under and one line over. When this pulls tight, it's gonna apply tension and friction across and it does not allow this to slip. That's the correct way to tie the cleat hitch. Do it the same way on both sides. You can even tie it on the uh, cleat itself on the dock. You'll also notice I've got a couple of fenders out. And I've done that so that when the boat does kind of wiggle, let's say the tide comes up, my lines are a little long, the boat's gonna kind of slide over a little bit. You wanna have a fender out. The good old fishbone there is wrapped around the piling to keep that side safe. And I got another fender here. Whatever fender you got, just as long as you put a little protection there. You don't want to come back, the tide's up, the boat slid over and you're banging into that wood there. So uh, another pro tip for you. To be a little bit more detailed about the direction of where the line's coming from and which end of the cleat you want to start with, I want to do something a little more clear here. See how I'm coming from way back over there and I've got two choices. I could come around the cleat this way or I could come around the cleat this way. And the way that it's supposed to be done to get it right is find the farthest base leg of the cleat. Let's choose this side is correct. We're gonna make our full turn. We're gonna come around and over, come under. And then as we make our turn, make our loop, whichever is closest to us, so this is closest to me, we're gonna turn it away from the line always turned away from the line. Notice how I've got two lines on bottom, one line on top. So when this tension is applied, all of that bite is pressing down hard. This friction is pressing down hard on these two lines. It's a lot less likely to move. Let's do it again. Proper way. We have the line coming from over there. We're going to bring it up to the farthest base leg here, away from the, the boat. 
We're going to make one full turn. Once we come up and over, we're going to make this crossover. I'd like to go ahead and just kind of push it past that nut there. We're going to bring up and make a loop. And that loop, the top portion here, which is nearest to me, gets folded away from this line. Bring it under and tighten it down. We have two crossed over by one. Plenty tight. I'm going to show you the wrong way now. Starting on this nearest base leg, we'll come over or around, making our full turn. Once we made the full turn, we'll come over and we will pass it under. Now, in a lot of cases, when these cleats are short, it'll bind right here. This, this line and this line will actually bind. You can't get the thing out. So especially if you've got the, the boat is out of the water and you're trying to release this line, it's hard to release. In this case, we come back over and we want to flip. We flip away from, so making our loop, flipping away. It looks right, but because it's bound over here, it's potential to get bound up when you try to release it. So this is the wrong way, although it looks right. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we flip it the wrong direction. We're gonna start with the right, the correct post, We're coming under correctly, making the full turn, coming back over the top, and instead of flipping away like we're supposed to, we flip the other direction. See how that looks? It's kind of split up there. This will actually release. With enough pressure, this is going to work itself loose. So you don't want it to look like that. Again, the proper way, coming back under, make, you, make your turn over, coming back under, we're going to flip it over. What's nearest to me, flip it away from the line. Pull it tight. Two overlaid by one. So one on top, two on the bottom. And that's a proper cleat hitch. Another reason why the cleat hitch is important. If the tide goes down and the boat is sitting high and dry, if it's basically, if you've tied it wrong, you've tied it too near to the dock and the boat's up out of the water, there's a tremendous load on the line. In that situation, you've got to either untie the knot or cut the rope. And if the knot is not tied right, you can't release the tension. So tying the cleat hitch allows you to pull the knot loose and lower the boat back down in the water slowly. So you'll safely uh, put your boat back in the water and also save the line. So lots of really great reasons for tying the cleat hitch. All right. Well, that's the cleat hitch, guys. If this video was helpful to you, check this one right here out.